and then it breaks. I do wonder why Rakesh is wearing a helmet here. <laughs> <laughs> it broke along, not directly across, but along uh, as an incline. It wasn't what I was expecting. That's what I wanted. And you will see that it started from here, and the grain is not parallel to the edge. So the crack has started in at a slight angle, possibly at the same angle of the grain at that point. So if we can get the grain more parallel to the edge, we can expect it to be somewhat stronger. I wanted to show the sort of equipment we've been testing using. This is a four-point bending equipment, uh, which we've developed ourselves in, in Capic, because they you can't buy them here. And we run this for several hours at a time until the electricity turns off, and then we start again when it comes back to it. Okay, so we have a piece of timber like this. Where, which bit of it are we going to use to cut the, the blade from? And which bit of it are we going to make bookshelves with? Well, this is the upper hillside part of the tree. We, this is has aberration, if you like, of this very high elastic. <coughs> Wood is going to have different characteristics. If we come down in this region, it's very much more uniform, which is the opposite wood or the normal wood. So we would aim for this type of tree to take the timber on the downside section. We would aim to ensure that the pieces of wood that we are cutting from it are large enough to average out some of the differences because we can't avoid the differences, they are there. So we're going to have to average them out. When you're looking at a forest to cut a piece of tree down, which tree do we choose? For starters, we're not going to choose that one that goes up at that angle. But why is it going up at that angle? Because it's either pushed that way because of rocks or the ground, or there's some light up in that direction. So the way I understand to manage the forest is to remove the trees that are at an angle, make bookshelves out of those, and ensure that each tree gets sufficient light to grow straight. At the end of all of this process, we have to put all these figures into the standard for small wind turbine design. And I decided that was probably enough for one presentation. In general, the safety factor for not thoroughly characterized timber is a factor of 10. And that, that will be challenging. If we can characterize the timber better, we can bring the safety factor down. And that will mean thinner turbine blades. <coughs> if, however, at the end of all this, you find it hard going, then think of this poor old bloke using a rock for his pillow. Afterwards, he feels so good when you get up. Thank you very much. Because it was a gradual process, or I think they were watching it at the time. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have some videos. Uh, but I don't okay. Think we have here, but uh, we had a video recording, and then we saw that recording, and it was from that point. Or is not structure there. I also would like to comment that that, that the way of fracturing that along along the grain is very much like you see in in fiber composites that you fracture along the fiber. Mm -hmm. So I think. It's also in the previous presentation was pointed out that some of the experience and knowledge that is created for composite materials can be transversed to wood. Yeah, I'm listening very hard. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, yeah, thank you for the 
this uh, presentation. Uh, my question is, how many species you have tested in the timber? You saw four or six species. You have a lot of species from no. local to we have great regions. We have selected just eight, just eight, based on anecdotal evidence of their suita or likely suitability and their availability. So in other words, by talking to carpenters to get their advice as to which type of wood they would consider suitable, we have taken those that set and uh, endeavored to test them. Unfortunately, there are so many different yeah, timbers in so Nepal, we are stuck there. There are types of spaces like Simul and Cha. Mm -hmm. Do you know about that? Yeah. Chama, I'm familiar with Cha and Simul. Mm -hmm. Two types of spaces are there, and I think they may be better than Makuri. I think so. Well, okay. Can you record that, please. Yeah. Now, I'll say that these kind of timbers were not easily available in the furniture or manufacturing factory. So if you are going to uh, like a manufacturer plate, you yeah. will have to specially order those kind of timbers so you have to cut down for the forest. Yeah. So what we have consider, uh, we are considering in this project is which kind of timber are very easily available at any part or any place. So if uh, uh, we, are also we have also divided according to the region. Like uh, if we are going to region of around 3500 meter, the pine is very easily available there. So it's not like we are going to see solve uh, that reason. You have to transport again. So these are all the factors we had considered and we have uh, uh, decided, okay, let's test for these eight timbers rather than others. But the, the similar is available in Vinal factory. Most of the Vinal are produced by Simon. Okay. I will consider. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there an effect from the performance of the blades or like the uh, maximum power coefficient of the blades? I mean, according to these uh, things that uh, uh, you have studied? The performance of the blades aerodynamically is determined by their shape. The weight of the blade determines how well it will start, how it will accelerate, but the nature of the material itself has a secondary effect. For instance, if the blade starts to bend back because of the wind is strong, we're going, to, we're going to be spilling wind. And the aerodynamic shape has started to change. The radius has started to change. I would hope it doesn't bend so much that it's a problem. But there was one turbine that was designed for the blades to deform in high winds as a protection mechanism. But we are not aiming to do that. And we don't expect that. Next. Uh, is it possible to, uh, to put some metallic aces like uh, we put some frames so that we can reduce cracks? Yes, you could. In cases where in fiberglass blades, I know they've been using a helicopter blade tape over the edges to, pr to protect the edge. We haven't tried that as yet. Well, we no have tried helicopter. for the base of the bed. Like, uh, sorry. This is a part of attachment uh, hub. Uh, which we attach to the generator mm -hmm. and this part is most likely to get cracked after a couple of observations from our blades in the wind turbine. So what we had done in the our recent is we have a metal plate attached in between like sandwich between these blades uh, so that it goes into the generator mm -hmm. and we have no problem of any cracks or something like that. That's the danger of bolts and holes causing <laughs> stress concentration. Yeah. Yeah. We heard about the last paper. But we will not uh, put the bolts in the same, uh, same line. We will just do the yeah, not in the square, but in triangle, so that you yeah, can have a green right. angle in the same direction and the two holes at the same point. Yeah. That will recur this. And uh, what's the appropriate ease of a tree, and uh, which part of a trunk is mostly used? I don't know what the appropriate age of the tree is. That's something we don't know. Nor do I know what the best height is either. That's something we further have to investigate. As you can see, it takes quite some time to investigate even a small piece of tree, let alone the whole length of it. <laughs> what, what about the issue of sustainability? I mean, in, in, we could take your talk as advocating going right. around to the forest with chainsaws to make wind turbine blades. I mean, you know, there, there's, there's a... Yeah. No, it doesn't quite fit, does it? 
the, that is one of the advantages of Lakuri. It's not, as I understand, there are no Lakuri tree farms, but it grows so readily that it is used as a commercial crop. Basically, it grows in, in waste ground on private land, fundamentally. The others, like um, Utis, which are grown commercially uh, for plywood, is really pushing it on the on its characteristics for um, wind turbine blades. It's closer to balsa in its uh, characteristics. Mm -hmm. Because there are a number of um, Chinese poplar type timbers that people are starting to grow on the plantation for applications. Oh, okay. Plants, so we should take note of that. Any other questions? Well, in that case, I should thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.